Hey everyone, welcome to this video. This is going to be an interesting video. I've never done anything like this before. So this video is pretty much gonna be me trying my new fake tan, trying a makeup look and trying different outfits so that I am ready for when the lockdown ends. And for my first night out, I know exactly how I wanna look. But yeah, it's just a little bit of fun. It's like a get ready with me tutorial and try on all in one. But I hope you enjoy this video. Welcome. So we're going to start seven days before. This is when the prep begins, especially if you've got a big event on. But what I normally do seven days before is I start prepping my skin for fake tan. As much as I'd like to say that I religiously moisturize all the time, sometimes I do not. Believe it or not, Jen, right away. At the moment, I am using this new one that I bought from Coles, literally nothing fancy, but it's, it was on sale but it's the Gaia Intensive 7 Day Repair Body Lotion and it does the job, honestly. My skin is so dry, so I will literally use anything at the supermarket that's on sale. So I find that scrubbing my skin too hard with like coffee scrubs and stuff has made my skin crack and I could never figure out why when I put fake tan on my skin even worse, like it looked like I had snake skin and I realized it was because I was using way too much of those coffee scrubs. I find that the best thing you can do is just moisturize, but I will exfoliate once the week before. I normally use the Frank Body Scrub, but I just picked this one up from Coles. But it is the Blood Orange and Ginger Scrub. Everything that I want, so baby, won't you come with me? We'll get through doing what we couldn't do. So tell me everything that I can do for you, baby. I promise I know. So it is now time to fake tan. Today I am trying something new and so doing a dress rehearsal, even though it's, this is just for a bit of fun, doing a dress rehearsal for like your fake tan, your makeup looks really helps you sort of figure out what you're going to do on the day without any mistakes. I'm trying something new today. This was highly recommended to me. It is the Mind Tan Caramel Color Correcting Tan. It's in a one hour express self tan foam, but you can leave it on for a little bit longer. So I will say this is something I do not normally do the night before in terms of I will never normally try a new tan if I know I'm going somewhere important or like where I'm dressing up or whatever. You just don't do that because you don't know how the color is going to turn out and you just don't know how it's going to look. I would highly recommend testing fake tans that you've never tried or if you've never done fake tan before. I would highly recommend doing it a couple of weeks before just to make sure it is it but today I'm not going anywhere tomorrow. I've always used the James Reed mitt. I've used it for a very long time. I'm sure there's really good ones out there now but at the time when I purchased this some of the mitts on the market were fucking terrible and this was like the only decent one because it had like a plastic lining inside. I used the old Bondi Sands one which was terrible and my fingers would be literally brown or orange every time I would take my hand out of the mitt. see what I'm doing so I'm kind of just hoping for the best okay so usually for my hands I will do just like a tiny like speck maybe even less than that that's probably like a bit much to be honest with you I'll probably do less than that and then I will take a blending brush and I will just blend it into my hands I used to use whatever was left over on the gloves but I found that it just couldn't get through the grooves and stuff and so it looked a bit ridiculous I would even use a bigger brush than that. If you have something like a bit bigger like this, I would use that. Okay, so today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I've been umming and ahhing about getting an air wrap. So I've actually asked my cousin to let me borrow hers for this video. So let's just give it a whirl. I've used it once before and I really, really liked it. I just really don't enjoy straightening my hair anymore because it makes my hair really flat because I don't have much hair. However, when I used this brush attachment, I felt like it just smoothed my hair out. It dried my hair. It was kind of like a blow wave, but without... I find that even blow waving my hair sometimes just sets the frizz in place whereas this kind of because it's getting brushed down in that direction it's brushing down the frizz it's smoothing out my hair it's straightening my hair without flattening it you can kind of see that 
I don't really kind of get this volume with my straightener in all my other older hairstyles. Like my hair is so flat when I straighten my hair. So I definitely think this is something I'm going to get for myself for Christmas. I really like the way it just smooths out my hair. I mean, there's still a little bit of frizz, but I would take that over like a dead straight flat hair that makes my hair really flat and oily really quickly so we're going to start with some skin prep last night i had already put on a little bit of self tanner on my face i use the bondi sands pure self tanning drops i'm going to start off with a mask you know what on nights where i'm going all out and i want my skin to be perfect and have the perfect base i've got to do a face mask so this is the one that I'm using today. It's the Skin Vestment. It's the Rose Gold Hydrogel Mask. I got gifted this by my friend. It's just a really nice hydrating mask. It brightens your skin and it just soothes the skin and um, plumps it up. So I'm gonna use that and the packaging's pretty cool too. Usually when I pop on a face mask, I'll make sure my skin is a little bit damp as well. It just makes the face mask go on a little bit better or a little bit faster as opposed to if your skin was dry. So you can use water or like a hydrating toner. This feels very good because my eyes are really puffy this morning. It's so nice and cooling and it feels so, so good. The only thing I will say about this mask is that I feel like it's a bit heavy and so you'll probably have to lie down. I'm more of like a multitasker when I have a mask on and I want to do other things. So it definitely slips off because it's so heavy it, and you gradually have to just pull it back up. Okay, so it's been about like 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to take it off. Ooh. I'm going to use the Perito Deep Sea Cream. I've just run out of a lot of stuff, so I'm just using this at the moment, which I don't mind at all. actually quite like. I just don't think there's enough hydration. And then I'm going to use the Bonafide Oil. I'm going to do about two or three drops in here. Also, can we just talk about this tan? I am obsessed with the color. It is just the perfect like caramel color. I'm just obsessed, honestly. I can't get over it. So I'm going to pop on some sunscreen, cold sunscreen, so, so good. Obviously, if you're going out at night, you probably won't need this because I'm just doing this dress rehearsal during the day. I'm going to pop it on because I'm sitting in the sun. So I think the look that I'm going to go for is going to be like the classic like matte winged out liner that I've been doing for a while now and I haven't really done a proper tutorial of it. So today is the day. I might go a little bit heavier on the bottom lash line to make it really extra like extra. So I'm going to start off with an eye base. I'm going to use my little concealer palette. I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Concealer in the color Ginger. I'm normally a custard, but when I have fake tan on, I will usually go a little bit deeper, a little bit darker. And this is not even that much darker, to be honest with you, but it is just a little bit darker than the custard. I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury powder and I'm just going to set everything. You can probably like use a loose powder. I'm just really lazy and I'll just take anything that's like a compact. And I will make sure I always set it all the way to the outskirts on the edge here as well because you always do blend out your eyeshadow to the edges of the eye. Especially when you do like a really smoked out look, you do want to blend it all the way to that edge. Whenever I do this look, I always make sure I use the bronzer that I will use on my face and I will blend it into the crease just to tie everything together because this look is very winged out. It kind of connects to the bronzer. You want everything to be quite seamless. So the bronzer I'm going to use today is definitely going to be the Island Ting from Fenty Beauty. So I'll take a little bit of Island Ting. I like saying the name. And I will pop it into the crease. And usually I will look straight into the camera or look straight into the mirror, sorry. And I will blend it out like that. And just sort of lifting it slowly. You're just layering. It doesn't need to be very pigmented. If it's very, very light, it's totally okay. You can see there's quite a bit of warmth in the crease and that's sort of the diffusion that I want to create. Pretty much every time I've done this look, I've only ever really used one palette. I'm obsessed with the Mario Master Mattes. I feel like it just does everything I need it to do, especially for a lot of matte looks that I've been doing lately. I don't really use shimmer that much anymore. Um, I just like that vibe, that very matte winged out vibe. And this is just perfect for it. It just does everything, honestly. I really rarely pick up anything else these days. Just the one below the lighter color. But I really like this color, this mustardy color here. And I'm just going to go into the crease again. I'm just creating depth. That's all this look really is. But instead of going all the way to the front, I'm just sort of starting to focus only on the outer edges. 
so just on the outskirts and it's totally okay if some drops below you can see that it's starting to wing out i'm going to take a clean brush and start to buff in the edges just a little bit just to make sure it's quite nice and seamless next color i'm going to take which i love and you can see that i've dug through it quite a bit i'm going to take that color there and i'm going to blend out the edges once again And this time I'm going to start to sort of pull and wing it out a little bit. I just want it to be quite dramatic. I'm going to go in with one more color. I'm going to go in with this color here and I'm just going to blend it so it looks even darker. Like I said, it's all about layering and placement and most of the time these colors are just going to go on the outer edge. Just want to place it down and see what it looks like first. Okay, that's on the lash line. And slowly I'm going to lift it upwards you can probably use a smaller brush for this i don't think maybe the brush i chose was perfect and you can take one of the brushes you had before and just blend out the edges if you feel like it's too harsh or it's too much for you but i know that once i pop lashes on it's all going to be covered so i'm going to do a simple simple cut crease today just to define the eyes a little bit more because this is going to be a nighttime look i'm going to use ginger again the color that i used before and i'm going to just carve out the lid so that i can press down a light color just to exaggerate that area a little bit more so i'm just going to take ginger and i'm just going to press it along the eye and I think the best thing to do here is just to look straight ahead to see what kind of shape you want to create and you can see already it's definitely highlighted that front bit for me and that's all I really want to do so I might just mix that color here and this color here together so it just is a little less harsh and then I'm going to press it into that concealed area conceal it I don't think that's a word And I'm just going to go back into the crease and just blend everything out so it's a little less harsh. A little bit above. Alright, next up I'm going to use the Mecca Max Black Pencil. And I'm going to do like a winged liner and I'm going to really smoke this pencil out because it's really easy to blend. I think these pencils are better when they're a little bit blunt. They don't hurt as much. So you just want to sharpen them too, too much. And just start to sort of blend out that liner. And you can see it just blends out really easily. And I'm not going to take it too close to the front, which I have accidentally. I'm just going to wing. Ooh. That out. I'm going to take an angled brush because I, now I kind of want a little bit more precision and a little bit more sharpness on the edge. Once I've done that wing liner, I'm going to set that liner with a bit more powder again. I'm going to go in with an eyeshadow just to set it in place because it deepens the color and it also just locks it in. I'm just going to go in with the black eyeshadow and I'm just going to press it into the liner. Because it can be a little bit patchy once you blend out the pencil and the powder will just fill out any gaps that looks a bit funny and funky. I'm just going to take a clean brush and just sort of buff out the edges just so it's a little less harsh. I'm going to pop on some mascara. So I always use this one. I use the exact same one every single time. I'm going to do lashes like almost closer to the end because I find that whenever I put lashes on first, it gets really messy. There's heaps of like loose powder stuck in it and it looks really janky so we're gonna wait till the very end to do that i feel like with this hollywood flawless filter a lot of the times it's too dark for me or it's too olive but i'm gonna try it today and see how it goes because i feel like the body is a good color to try something deeper today okay so this is the hollywood flawless filter just using it as like a primer i guess a lot of the times people will just pop it on the top of the cheekbone i'm just gonna pop it all over I would probably just avoid the nose area. It is quite glowy. So if you've got combo skin or oily skin, it's not it. So I'm going to use the Dior 2WO, which is probably a little bit lighter than I am now. So I'm going to mix in the NARS Radiant Longwear in Tahoe, which is like my go-to mixer for like fake tan colors. And I'm not going to do too much because it's actually quite dark. So I'm going to mix the two together. Yeah, I think 
that's pretty good I guess so a really good tip if you do have fake tan on and you're trying to match your color it's really important to get like a separate face tanner to help you get and achieve that color to match the body because sometimes I find that you end up putting so much foundation on your face trying to match your body because if you think about it foundation is not really opaque it still has some translucency you can still see a bit of your skin underneath so by achieving that perfect match you will have to use so much foundation trying to match the body so I do feel like it is quite important to prep the skin so that it matches the body as well as it can so then you don't have to pile on a shit ton of foundation so I'm going to use the Huda Beauty Tan to in light. I always use this and it's dark enough for me to use even when I have fake tan on, which is great. I've scooped it out of the palette and I've popped it onto the back of my hand. This is where I like to blend out the color and sort of just diffuse it into the brush. And sometimes I will swipe it just above here, just to tighten the eyeshadow together. And then just on the jawline, I never just go underneath. I do still have to go on top as well. Just so you're carving out that area. I'm going to contour my nose a little bit. When I do full coverage looks, I like to contour my nose with cream first. I find that if I'm doing a very natural look and I contour my nose with cream, it makes it look really heavy sometimes because there's just so much product in that area. But because this is a full coverage beat, we're going to contour the nose with cream. I like using Biscuit from Westman Atelier. I feel like the color is nice and cooler. I'm going to pop it on top of the bronzer that I just used that was on the back of my hand. And you can see a bit of the color difference. You can see how that it's quite cool compared to the warmer color. I'm going to just snatch the bottom off. I'm just going to connect everything to the brow bone pretty much. Someone asked me for a nose contour tutorial, but honestly, I don't really... Yeah, it's really hard to explain nose contour because everybody's nose is going to be different. Like the way I snatch my nose off is going to be very different to the next person because, you know, your nose might be smaller or bigger in some areas. But generally speaking, you just always want to bring the nose contour all the way to the brow and blend it in there. You can't just cut off like here for, for no reason. It has to always like blend into the brow. And the reason why I'm doing it really sloppy right now is because I'm going to go back in with concealer and clean it up anyway. I'm just popping it in the main areas that I'd like it. And I like snatching off the edge as well, which connects to the bridge, which I'll take off a little bit. And then I like doing the other side too. And then I just snatch off the edges here. So I'm just going to correct my under eye area. I'm just going to go in ever so slightly with the ginger concealer that I used before, the matte concealer. I'm just going to correct the under eye area here just to sort of brighten it a little bit. The ginger concealer, the color has a lot of peach in it, which I think is great for the under eye area. I'm just using a little bit, but I find that the matte version of the concealer is very full coverage, so I don't have to use so much. It just does the job for me. And then I'm just going to take a little bit around the mouth, which is naturally a little bit darker in that area. And I'm going to take some around the nose as well. Next up, I'm going to take the Kosas Concealer. I don't even know if this is going to be dark enough for me. I think it'll be a very highlighty kind of color. Okay, it's not too bad. It's definitely on the, mm, I don't know. It's definitely on the lighter side. So I'm going to pop a little bit under there. And I'm just going to snatch and clean up that eyeliner. And then what I'm going to do is just very neatly snatch the nose. So I feel like with this, you always just want to use a brush. And now I'm just blending it out. And because I didn't do that nose contour very heavily, as I blend it out, it starts to disappear with the concealer and they just fuse in together. So it just makes my job a little bit easier. So now I'm taking the Nude Sticks Beach Babe Matte Cream Blush. I definitely don't think this color is really matte. It's more of like a skin finish to me. But I just scrape a bit of the top off. So this color is really great if you have a little bit of a deeper tan on so it doesn't look so like bright or stark. So I'm just going to pop it on the bottom of the cheekbone, not too high to the top. I will blend it upwards, but I'm going to start on the bottom of the cheekbone because, again, my cheeks are very full, so I don't need that much sitting at the top. 
Now I'm going to set everything. I like using the Derma Blend powder. I like mixing it with the warm saffron that they sell as well, which is basically a yellow powder. So this is the warm saffron and the original color that I've got. It's a little bit more golden. I mix the two together. It's a pretty even ratio. You just decide on how yellow you want your powder to be and you mix it accordingly. I feel like this powder just blurs out all the texture for me and it's just heaven. Can you see the difference? Like, it's just incredible. If you've got dry skin, I don't think this technique is something that you would probably want to do or you'd want to prep your skin very well. Not just for one day, but you'd probably want to be prepping your skin for the entire week just to prepare for like a really deep bake. With the nose, I usually use a very thin brush and I'll take the powder and just sort of press it in the line. I usually let this line bake for quite a bit while I do everything else. Okay, I'm gonna start like setting everything now. So I'm gonna use the Island Ting from Fenty Beauty, which I used in my eyes earlier. And so I will just sort of start to set the bronzer. I never really dust it or buff it into the skin because it just starts to move everything else underneath, which is the last thing that I want since there's so many layers happening. And I'll take a little bit on the jaw. Next up, I like using a really luminous bronzer. Sort of give the skin a bit of a glow again because you can see that it's quite flat. As velvety as it is, it's quite flat. So we're going to go in with a much more luminous bronzer. And I don't use that much. I just use a little bit on the top of the cheekbones where the sun would normally hit. Just a little bit there. I'm going to take a bit of the Patrick Tar Blush in She's Seductive. I've actually never used this because I've got a bit of a tan on today. I feel like this might be a nice like soft color. And I'm just, again, popping it underneath the cheekbone. I'm not going too heavy. I know this seems like a bit of an overkill, but I'm going to go in with another powder. I'm going to use the Hourglass Radiant Light, and I'm going to take this fluffy brush. And I'm just kind of going to dust it everywhere just to give the skin a bit of a glow again. But yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take the Fenty Beauty Hustler Baby Highlighter. This is like my favorite of all time. And I'm just going to dust a little bit on the top of the cheekbone, just at the very top. And then just buff it in like that. And sometimes I will layer it with a little bit of the free highlighter from Bare Minerals because this is a little bit more of like a soft pearl glow and it just diffuses everything a little bit more. I'm going to go in with this color here. And I'm just going to do the entire bottom lash line. And I go quite low as well because I want to create the illusion of depth here. And then once you're done with that, you'll just want to start connecting it to the outer edge where the winged liner is. So it all just sort of makes sense. So then I'm going to take that slightly darker color and I'm just going to do the same thing but with a smaller brush. And I'm just going to run it along the bottom lash line here. But this time, a little bit closer to the actual lash line, you will eventually sort of get to the edge and you just connect it to the top. I'm going to use the brown colored Mecca Max pencil. I find that black under my eyes a little bit too harsh sometimes. So I'm just going to go back to where I sort of popped all that eyeshadow and I'm just going to go in again and I'm just going to deepen everything pretty much. Essentially, that's what I'm doing. And you can sort of just focus on the outer edge if you want to, but I'm just going to do the entire bottom lash line. And then I'm going to sort of blend it out a little bit. And sometimes you might have to extend that wing just to make it a little bit more properly shaped. And you can even take it a little bit closer here, but sometimes I find that when I take it too close as the day or as the night passes, it starts to bleed out a little bit and it smudges. But for this look, I'm going to take it all the way in just to give it the vibe, you know, we're going all out here. So there you go. So I'm going to do my waterline, which is not what I normally do. I normally put on the lashes first. I've done the entire waterline today instead of just stopping on the sort of front two thirds because I just want it to be extra smoky. So the lashes I'm gonna to use today are the Model Rock Jagger Lashes. These are quite dramatic. Okay, the lashes are on, which I love, but let's do my brows now. I'm just gonna brush them up. I'm going to use the Mecha Max Fair Pencil, and then I'm gonna use the Kosas Airbrow in medium brown, but I'm gonna do this off camera just to speed it up because I feel like I've spent way too long already. 
I'm going to kind of go for like a 90s lip. So I'm going to make it a little bit extra brown on the outside and then a little bit lighter in the middle. But I'm going to use the color Bite Me. I love this lip liner. It's so, so nice. And in the center of the lips, I'm just going to pat in a really light color. I'm going to use Bikini Babe from Huda Beauty. This is just a mini. It's probably really old. I probably shouldn't even still have it, to be honest with you. But I just use it on myself anyway, so it's okay. But I'm going to take a little bit and just press it into the center of the lips just to lighten it. Oopsies. Not too much. Sometimes you just have to go back in with the lip liner just to shape it up really quickly if you've accidentally overdone it, which I have. So I'm just going to shape that. So the last thing I'm going to do is take the Tom Ford bronzer and just sweep it. Oh my gosh, it's way too much. And then also, because this is a really bottom lash heavy look, I'm going to top it off with some mascara on the bottom lash line. It's a must to complete the look. So I'm just going to quickly set my face with setting spray. And I like using the Tata Dewy Skin Mist on the edges just to give it a bit of a glow. Okay, so now that the makeup is done, let's go try on some outfits. I've got three that I actually prepared. So I've got all my clothes and stuff here. So this is like the top half and that is the rest of it, but I'm going to show you in the mirror. I feel like these heels would go perfectly with it as well. Okay, so this is the fit and I really, really love it. I really like the way these pants sort of shape me. I feel like with the top, it's really nice and proportionate and it shows just enough skin. Again, please ignore that view. It's not great, but let's just focus on this outfit. I'm going to exchange these pants for a size down because I feel like I want them to be a little bit more snug and give me a little bit more shape. Even though they are already pretty good, to be honest with you, I just want a little bit more tightness around here. I think it's a bit loose in this area here. But other than that, I freaking love this outfit so much. Okay, so this is outfit number two. So it's like a cropped shirt and then you just tie it at the front, which I might retie this. So you tie the front to the back and then you tie the back to the front if you can see. Again with these pants, I just feel like they're a little bit too loose. I don't like it bunching up here, but for now it'll do. And I think I'm going to wear it with these shoes. Okay, so this is outfit number three. So it's the white shirt and then you've got like the cream beige pants. I wish they were a little bit longer. I feel like I like it when it almost touches the ground, but that's okay. I feel like a nice cropped shirt is always like such a good staple to have as well. Cute fit. I've kept the pants on. I've just decided to change the top. I am like such a huge halter neck kind of girl. My shoulders and my arms are quite broad. Well, I feel like they are anyway. So when I wear halter necks, they kind of divert the eye towards the neckline instead of like my shoulders, like a traditional tank top does. So I love a halter. So I feel like this top can be worn with jeans or it can be worn with like pants. I really love that seam line underneath as well. I've got a really flat chest. So when there's like sort of illusions creating a bigger boob, I'll take it. I definitely feel like maybe this would be more of a vibe with like jeans so I might pop a pair on just to see what it looks like. I just don't have very nice jeans at the moment. I've changed into the jeans which I'll show you the full length but I definitely think it goes really well with the jeans as well. These jeans just don't fit very well. They're more like mom jeans so they're very comfortable around the waist area and they don't really fit snug like skinny jeans do but I feel like they either need a belt or something to snatch it in a little bit like that which is normally what I would prefer anyway. Yeah, I'll show you the full length. I don't know, I'm confused. Maybe it is a vibe. I'm not really sure. You can tell me what you think. If you prefer these jeans over the pants. 
I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's really random again. I just thought I'd just try on all the stuff that I've been buying, make a look out of it and just get ready and get into the mood and get ready for the end of lockdown. I hope I gave you some makeup inspo, some tanning inspo, some outfit inspo maybe. I'm definitely no fashion icon, that's for sure. But I will see you next week for my next video. You are like the oxygen I need to survive. I'll be honest. My love will be better in me. I am so. It's very cold in here, so if you can see my nips, that's not my fault. Eventually connected to the edge. I don't know if you can hear the plane. I want to chop your